Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. And we are just so thankful for you guys on this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for another beautiful Sunday morning, Father. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather this morning um, to worship and to praise your name through this virtual service, Father God. And Lord, we ask that you just guide us, Father God, and lead us in the days to come. Father, we pray for our church family as a whole, Father God. We pray for uh, the Joyner family, the Bennett family, and the Moore family, Father God, during this time, Father. Lord, we ask that you just comfort them, Lord, and comfort us, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for the life of Sister Jesse Joyner, Father God. We thank you for the legacy that she has left behind for all of us to follow. And Lord, now we ask that you just uh, open our hearts and our minds that we might receive this word from you on today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Listen to all of the fathers of St. Paul. There is a small gift um, for you all. Um, so please see me on next Sunday um, and I will be passing out that gift for all of our fathers. We hope that you all enjoy your day and have a wonderful Father's Day. Listen, this morning we're going to share the word of God from Genesis chapter 32 verse 22 through 32. And it reads, that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not outpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Penel and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because of the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. If you allow me to use for a subject this morning, the, J the Jabbok experience, the Jabbok experience. Uh, and so this morning I asked the question, are you ready to be blessed? And this may seem like a, a rhetorical question because there isn't anyone that, that doesn't want to be blessed. And so many people are, or so many of us, we pray uh, the prayer of Jabaz, where it says, Lord, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory and give me increase. However, everyone, regardless of how they may think, isn't ready to be blessed. Understand some may want God to bless them with a hundred million dollars today, but can't even manage the 500 that they get paid every payday. Yet they are not ready for that blessing. Some may want the uh, big expensive Mercedes, but can't afford to maintain the little, the little Toyota they have right now. They are not ready to be blessed. Someone else may want God to bless them with a $300,000 home, yet they struggle to pay the little $500 or $800 rent in their apartment they have right now. Understand they are not ready to be blessed. And I use those analogies because naturally we are a sensory being. Uh, this simply means that we experience things in life and we give definition to things in life based upon the identification of those things by one or more of our senses, which is sight, sound, taste, smell, and touch. We are so in touch with the sensory nature of ourselves that we say things like, if I can see it, then I'll believe it. Uh, if I can hear it, then I'll understand it. If I can smell it, then I'll know something is being done. If I can taste it, then I'll know it is good. If I can touch it, then I'll know it's real. And sadly, oftentimes in one spiritual life, we base the fact that we are 
uh, are blessed upon fleshly senses. Because I see the nice car in the driveway, I'm blessed. Because I, I, I feel the name brand clothes on my back, I'm blessed. Because I can eat lobster and steak, I'm blessed. Because I have X amount of dollars in the bank, I'm blessed. However, I want you to understand that it's not about the car that you drive. It's not about the clothes that you wear. It's not about the money that you have in your bank account. But it's about who God is and what God has done that constitutes I am blessed. Uh, there is a travesty that has taken place which people are spiritually destroyed. And the Bible says in, in Hosea 4 and 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We lack the understanding of the word blessed. We use the term uh, so much that it has become just a casual greeting or a nice goodbye. For example, two people can see each other and, and one will say to the other, how are you? And the other one replies, I'm blessed. And after a moment or two, the conversation ends like this. Well, have a blessed day and, and, and we all go on our merry way. Understand they haven't given any thought to what they had just said. It has become part of a normal conversation. But I come to find out that the word blessed is more than a sensory reaction. It's more than a bank account. It's more than an extravagant lifestyle. And it's more than a casual greeting. The word blessed means to be equipped or endued with power to succeed. Success is not uh, 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 dependent upon the amount of money that you have. Success is not measured by the position or, or your position or, or your title or any titles that you may attain. Success in the word of God is to be victorious and victorious is being able to overcome obstacles. And so in our text this morning, we find a man by the name of Jacob. And the name Jacob means surplanter or trickster. And now we know the story of Jacob and how well yet in his mother wounds, he and his brother and Esau were at war with each other. But yet in spite of himself, God shows favor on Jacob and Jacob prospers financially and materialistically. Jacob begins to have an increase in his wealth. He begins to have an increase in his possessions and he begins to get a lot of stuff. His brother's uh, and his brother-in-laws, they get jealous of him because of the stuff that he has. And it's a sad time. It's a sad time today um, where people are jealous because of your stuff. Uh, we go through this today in, in our world today. And what is really sad is when church folks get jealous of other church folks because of stuff. Uh, you know, so-and-so drives a, a nicer car or they live in a larger house or because they uh, got a title or position. People get jealous of stuff and they look at gifts instead of the giver and the base the, they base their fact that the person is blessed because of stuff. Uh, they are busy living a sensory life instead of understanding what God has done. So Jacob, the trickster, he had been tricked he literally began to fear for his life and, and he takes his family and he leaves Laban at night running for his life. And, and, and we fast forward just a little bit. We come to a place called Jabbok and Jabbok literally means pouring out. And at Jabbok, Jacob has an experience like he never had before. At Jabbok, Jacob has a transformation. Uh, understand that Jacob is broken. He experiences a change and he goes through loneliness and he fights for his life and he's afraid. The pressures of life press down upon Jacob and, and fear begins to take control of his mind. But at Jabbok, his consciousness begins to remind him of all the stuff that he has done in his life. At Jabbok, Jacob is left alone. He is scared. He's alone and he's now fighting for what just might be his life. But somewhere during the struggle, somewhere in the midst of all he is dealing with, he realized that I have a hold of God and he has a hold of me. And they wrestled until daybreak. The angel of the Lord even uh, caused Jacob's thigh to be out of joint. But Jacob held on right there at Jabbok. The man said, let me go. Jacob said, I will not let go or will not let thee go except thou bless me. Then the man said, what is thy name? And Jacob said, my name is Jacob. Understand the name Jacob means trickster, as I stated, or surplanter. This showed that Jacob was nothing and that he had came to total humiliation and submission. And so if you want to be blessed, first of all, you got to humble yourself. 
You got to humble yourself. Once he humbled himself, his name changed from Jacob uh, to Israel, which meant prince. Jacob then asked the man his name, still holding on. And, and, and we saw that the man asked, why do you need to know my name? And he began to bless Jacob right there. He blessed him there. This is the key. There at Jabbok, he blessed him. There in total humbleness. There in total submission. There in total dependence and in, in loneliness. In the midst of his troubles, he blessed him. Understand, he didn't give him materialistic things. He didn't give him a position. He didn't give him a financial overflow. He didn't give him stuff, but he blessed him there at Jabbok. What did he give him? You might ask. Well, he gave him power to be victorious. Remember, victorious means to overcome. And if you go to the 33rd chapter, you will find that Jacob overcame his fear of meeting his brother. He overcame the stigma of his name. He overcame his past reputation. He overcame the Canaanites and he overcame evil. Why? Because at Jabbok, in the midst of all of his troubles, he humbled himself. He held on to God and he didn't let go. In the midst of his trials, God equipped him with power, not with stuff, but with power to overcome. When he humbled himself, God gave him what he needed to be victorious. And so the question this morning is, are you ready to be blessed? You might be in your own person, Jabbok. Uh, fear might have gripped your mind. Uh, depression might be trying to hold you down. You might feel like you're all alone. You might be troubled on every side, perplexed and persecuted. But if you just humble yourself and hold on to God's unchanging hand, seek his face. You may have to go through your personal Jabbok experience, but in the midst of your troubles, if you hold on, God will bless you there. How many believe that on this morning? You ought to tell God, thank you. You ought to tell God, thank you. In the midst of your troubles, if you just hold on, God will bless you. Not with stuff, but with the ability to overcome, to overcome the wicked one, to overcome evil, to overcome when you are judged, and to overcome the world. The question this morning, is are you ready to be blessed? Are you ready to be blessed? Father God, we thank you for this word on this morning, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you just continue to let us go forth, Father God, concentrating on everything, realizing that, Father, that uh, your blessings give us power, Father God. It's not about the stuff that we, uh, we have or materialistic stuff, Father God, any financial gain, but it's about becoming victorious, victorious in your word, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you. And Lord, we just ask that you just continue to have your way in each and all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You all be blessed. Be blessed. And next Sunday, we will be back in person. Um, we do certainly thank you all for joining us today. This is our virtual service, kind of unusual, um, but we are uh, laying the mother of our church to rest today. And so, uh, we decided to do a virtual service this morning as we gather um, together today. And so I ask that you all just continue to lift uh, St. Paul in prayer and, and the family of Sister Joyner in prayer. Um, you all be blessed until we shall meet again. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. In just a few minutes, we're going to receive an offering. So uh, go ahead and get ready for that. And as you are getting ready to give, I want to tell you a story from the Bible. It's from Genesis chapter 12, and it's about a guy named Abraham. Abraham is 75 years old, and he has lived in this particular town all of his life. He's got a nice life. He has a nice family. He knows everyone in town, and he's comfortable. So God comes to him and says, Abraham, I want you to leave your hometown, and I want you to travel to this land I'm going to show you. God didn't even reveal the end destination. He just told Abraham to get moving. The Bible says that the next day, Abraham loaded up and he moved. And I want to teach you a principle that I see in this story. In fact, I see it throughout the Bible. 
The blessings of God always follow obedience. Let me say that one more time. The blessings of God always follow obedience obedience. In other words, we obey God first and then we're blessed. I know what you're thinking. If God would would give me a raise, then I would be generous, but it doesn't work that way. And I know you're thinking if God would give me some financial blessings, then I would obey the Bible. That's not how it happens. We obey God even when it's tough, even when it's hard, even when it makes us uncomfortable. That's how Christianity and faith work. Abraham went on to become the great father or the father of a great nation, the Jewish people. He was famous, blessed, and important. And God blessed him with a family. In fact, the Bible says that all people on earth would be blessed through Abraham. But none of that happened until after Abraham obeyed. And one of the biggest reasons that we give is to obey God. We give generously because that's what the Bible teaches. And even if it makes us feel uncomfortable, we want to be obedient, hallelujah, to God. The blessings of God will follow our obedience of God. So let's pray and ask God to bless this offering. And I'm going to pray that God blesses everyone who obediently gives to his purposes. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to give on this morning, Father God. Lord, we ask that you uh, just bless those that are given this morning, Father God. Bless them for their obedience, Father God. And Lord, we ask that you bless this offering for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, we thank you so much for your gifts on today. To God be the glory, amen. There are three ways to give to St. Paul. Our first way to give is you can mail a check to P.O. Box 1262, Kinley, North Carolina, zip code 27542. Our second way to give is through Cash App, and our Cash App is dollar sign S-T-P-A-U-L-K-E-N-L-Y. And our third way to give is through our website using PayPal at www.stpaulamechurch.com. Dot com. Once you're at our website, you will go to the Give button and it will direct you to our PayPal account. I'm a witness and I know that many of you are as well, that you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. So help us to advance the kingdom through the ministry of St. Paul and I believe God will bless you. We thank you for your gifts.